Hey there, pickle people. A couple of years ago, I entered my first ever Armies on Parade competition in my local Warhammer store. And while I did walk away with the best newcomer award, I was not happy with the board or the army that I presented. The board was lazy at best, with no real effort or thought going into how I made it. Now, I did put this down to it being a little bit of a rush job because I left it until the last minute. Now, when Games Workshop announced the competition date for this year, I decided I wanted to put together a real entry and actually try. I had loads of ideas and plans and I was super motivated, but once again, I left it until two weeks before. You'd really think that I would learn, but nope, just keep doing the same mistakes over and over again. We better get cracking, really. We've got a lot to do. Now I am not a terrain builder. Now I know that, that seems obvious, but there's so many hobby related YouTube channels that cover both miniature painting and terrain making that I think it's becoming a bit more commonplace for people to think that we all do everything. I do not, I am not a terrain builder. I've certainly dabbled on occasion with a few different bits and pieces, but never anything serious. And this will be my first real attempt to put into practice some of the things that I've seen on other YouTube channels, with the caveat that I don't really want to spend any money on equipment that I'm likely not going to use again. So this board is being built on the cheap. And when I say cheap, I mean Yorkshireman cheap. I started out with a wooden base offcut from a previous project I did a few years ago, as this was the perfect size for the board. It is a hell of a lot thicker and heavier than it has any need to be, but it did mean that I didn't have to go and buy any new wood, especially for this project. For the terrain itself, many of my favourite hobby channels use various types of foam. It seemed like the easiest way to do what I wanted to do, so I went and picked up this foam board from Wix, a hardware store here in the UK. Now I didn't have any fancy cutting tools like a hot wire cutter or anything like that, so I just used a massive kitchen knife. I cut the foam easy enough and attached it to the wood using a hot glue gun. Please don't laugh at the size of my glue gun. Now I went through quite a lot of glue to get this to stick down and part way through I was wondering if this was the best option. I've seen a lot of people saying that PVA is better if you've got the time to wait for it to dry, but because I delayed so long in starting the project, I did not have the time. With the foam finally secured, more or less, I started carving away the recessed central section. Now my vision for the board was to have a recessed channel with jagged rocks along either edge, drawing the eye like a runway to the central tomb rising up at the back of the board. I wasn't super happy with how uneven the central corridor was, but I figured that it would level out once I applied the modelling compound later on. I used the off cuts from the middle to make the rock formations along the edge, once again using the hot glue gun to fix them in place. Now I tried to fit pieces together that looked the best, knowing that I could fill any gaps in later on and make them look like they were jutting up out of the ground rather than just sort of sitting stuck out at awkward angles on top of a flat surface. After this, I started working on the centerpiece, the tomb at the back. I glued more foam at the back and carved along the edges and down the sides, trying to make it look less like a box and more like a hill. Spoiler alert, it still looks like a box. Once the basic shape was carved out on the firm, I added a couple of extra details to the front of the tomb. I added the big Necron door and I added some wood chips, some like wood bark chippings onto the front. In hindsight, I needed more of these. I'm using these in place of sort of rock molds to create a rocky surface. I could have done with a lot more of these. I didn't have a lot more of these. So it ended up being a bit redundant, but in the future, they work texture wise. They just need to have more of them on the surface so that they're not just a random few bits. Up to this point, I have to admit, I was feeling pretty frustrated. I felt like the vision that I'd had for the board was completely beyond my reach and that I was just making an absolute mess of it. Now, once I started to apply the modeling compound and started to fix the joins and add some much needed texture, I was a hell of a lot happier. That is until I ran out of compound. Now the original plan was to cover everything in the compound, to add texture to the cliff face and the rocks along the sides and to smooth out the rough carving that I'd done on the central section. But I ran out of compound. The smart thing would have been to go and get more. I decided to use some polyfiller that I got lying around because obviously that'll do the same job, right? Well, no, wrong. 
I wouldn't see this until a lot later on in the project when I came to painting it and adding other bits and pieces, but this stuff was not the best thing for me to use. It was crumbling constantly, bits flaking off, it wasn't as strong as I wanted it to be, and I would have been better off just going and getting some more modeling compound. But lesson learned, next time I know not to use this sort of stuff. I left the board until the following day and then gave the entire thing a coat of black from a rattle can. Now I've seen plenty of people online saying don't spray foam with rattle cans because it'll melt it and the world will explode or oh, words to those effects I'm pretty certain. But after a couple of sprays on some test pieces I felt safe enough priming this entire thing ready for painting. I mean let's be honest it's not like I'm going to make it any worse is it? Now the plan for the terrain itself is a red planet. My Necrons are all on red earth bases using the Mars earth base ready from Geek Gaming Scenics. So I figured it made sense to use the same on the board. Pretty obvious really. For the rocks and the cliff face, I wanted to go with a plum or sort of slaty color. Now because of the size of this thing and also because of how fragile that polyfiller and foam was, I decided to go with the airbrush to paint the most of the terrain. I hit all of the areas that were going to be covered in the Mars Earth with a reddish brown just to give them a better base coat than the black that I'd put down and to help me identify which areas were going to be which colour. Now for the stone I started off with a darker grey and then followed this up by adding some blue and some red just to make a sort of grey plum sort of like off purpley sort of colour. I applied this all over leaving some of the recessed areas in the darker grey just to add some variety and depth to the stone. Now once all that was on and dry, I took a very soft, cheap makeup brush and just applied a light lilac dry brush across all of the rocky surfaces just to bring out those higher up details. After that I took a little bit of a break from building the board as last weekend I played host to some faces that you may recognise. The weekend proved to be some very much needed R&R &R for the four of us, but while I had Luke over I couldn't resist getting some feedback from the terrain master himself and of course he had only nice things to say. I'm, I'm here, Pickle, oh I broke a bit off, Pickle <laughs> Gaming Xenix. Voila. Do you want me to do it? What's wrong with it? It's alright. So my first one... Well, you, is it finished? No, it's not oh, finished yet. Right, I've got Mars Earth to put on it. Good. On top. All the and Anything that's brown. Yeah. Mars Earth. Are you shaving this down here? Or is that going to be... It's a, uh, it's a design choice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, ran out, I ran out of compound. Can you tell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's there. There. Good base to work off, just chuck some dirt on it, that'll be alright. Bit of sand. Yeah. I've got some big crystals that I'm going to put on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice to see it finished. I'm not doing it for you though. No, I'm going to do it. Oh, good. I do it. This is my first, my first one. And then... Looks like it. <laughs> Thanks man. <laughs> Thanks very much. Love you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Getting some feedback and ideas from other hobbyists in person is one of the things that I've sorely missed over the course of the pandemic. Now chatting with Luke and Elston and Rich about my plans and ideas and hearing their suggestions was so refreshing and really inspired me to carry on with the board once they'd all left the following day. Once the house was empty of all those southerners, I had a fresh surge of inspiration and realised that I was actually a hell of a lot closer to finishing the project than I had realised. I applied some glue and tried to spread this out as evenly as possible across the mess that was my board and then I applied the Mars sand basing material. Now this took one bag for the entire board and I've still got a little bit left. Now this stuff is absolutely amazing for terrain, for miniatures, for basing alike. It's awesome. If you want to pick yourself any of this up, you can grab it via our affiliate link down below in the description with Grim Dice Tabletop Gaming. While I left the board to one side to dry, I set to work on the last bits of detail that needed adding on. Now these Necron crystals were sent over to me by Spellcrow and were just what I needed to add a little bit more Necroniness to the board. Yes, that is a word. The plan was to have them sticking out of the rocks in different places and add to the feel of this being an alien world. 
Now to paint these, I decided to try out some of the new air paints from Army Painter. Now these are designed to be used straight out of the bottle in an airbrush, and do you know what? They actually work. I've been airbrushing for a while now, and one of the things that can still mess me up is knowing how much to thin a paint that I'm using. These being good to go straight out of the bottle took that issue out and allowed me to just enjoy painting. I mixed a few of the colours together to get different tones and shades of green and had zero issues and actually I had zero clogging the entire time that I was painting with these. They are consistent across the board, I've used quite a few of them now and yeah, they are absolutely spot on for airbrushing, I am super super impressed. Kudos Army Painter, kudos indeed. With everything painted up, it was just a case of attaching everything to the board. Now I did spray on some green glow areas where I wanted to attach the crystals just to give some easy OSL effects. Now I was a little bit nervous here because I'd just spent however long making the board and then decided to cover it in bright green spots. If this looked bad, it was going to take a bit of fixing, but luckily it looks all right. I put some pins in the crystals so that I could slide those into the foam which held them secure rather than messing about trying to glue them on. And yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with the board how it looks here at this point. I spent some time the following evening laying out my army, trying different models in different positions in preparation for the competition itself. Now I've been building this army up over the course of the last year and it's been awesome to be collecting Necrons again. Now this was the moment that this entire project all came together for me. Seeing the army laid out on the board felt absolutely amazing and at that point I was finally happy with what I'd built. I have my Necrons in a cabinet so that I can see them all the time, but seeing them on a terrain board that's been built specifically for them was absolutely awesome. And I've done it all myself from scratch. I have done a terrain build. It might not be the best, most amazing, super detailed, super accurate and, and awesome terrain that some other people do, but it's mine and I've done this by myself. I've learned things, I've made mistakes and learned from those. And I am actually really excited to have a go at doing some more terrain in the future. Armies on Parade is one of the few competitions that I actually enjoy entering. It's not all about who has the smoothest blends, the sharpest highlights or the most detailed freehand. It's more of a celebration of our own personal miniature collections and getting to show them off to display them in the best way possible and share them with like-minded people. Telling their backstories and discussing plans for the future, it's one of the few times where I will use the cheesy line, it's not about winning it's about taking part. I really enjoyed entering Armies on Parade this year. It's the second time I've done it. Will I do it again next year? Absolutely. You can count on it. That's going to do it for this one guys, if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like down below and if you are new then consider tickling that subscribe button and ringing the notification bell. If you want to help support the channel there are a number of ways to do so, mainly via our channel membership program which gives you some cool perks which all of these amazing people have signed up to and to these awesome pickle people I say a hearty thank you so so much. If that's not your kind of thing then we do have our affiliate link with Grim Dice Tabletop Gaming down below in the description for all your hobby supply needs. It gives us a little bit of a kickback and it doesn't cost you anything extra. That's all from me, I'll catch you in the next one and until then, enjoy your hobby.